And with that, I'm excited to kick off today's webinar. I am Jen Thomas, the Community Engagement Manager here at the Housing Alliance, and I am joined today by my colleague, Aaron Zappia, Senior Government Relations Manager, um, and we are your Home Matters Day support team. So first of all, we really want to thank everyone for joining us on the call today and let everyone know that we have over 80 people signed up for our state advocacy day, which I believe is a new record. So that's really, really cool. Uh, so to get you ready for Home Matters Day on Tuesday, June 6th from 8 p.m. I'm sorry, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Let's start by going over our agenda for today. It's really cool that after three years of not having this, we are returning to Harrisburg together to advocate for affordable housing. And during today's webinar, we're gonna talk about why Home Matters Day is so important, our policy asks, our messaging framework, and what we'll be going on to prepare before, during the day, and after the day. And of course, we'll round out today's conversation with next steps and open it up for questions. So why Home Matters Day? Uh, we really need to increase resources and opportunities for housing and community development programs. And it really helps lay the foundation to maximize all the great work that's happening at the local level. And we know that when advocacy is done right and we're prepared and we come together, it really does work. So I'm gonna turn it over to Erin, who's gonna go over our policy asks for this year and our messaging framework and how to have an effective legislative visit. Okay, thanks a lot, Jen. Uh, thanks everybody for jumping on the call today. Um, so we're zeroing in on asking the legislature to once again raise the cap on the FAIR program. FAIR, of course, is Pennsylvania Housing Affordability Rehabilitation Enhancement Fund. It's administered by PHFA. It is currently capped at $60 million dollars from the state's uh, collections of realty transfer tax. That's a revenue stream that currently is probably gonna generate about $600 million in future years. We expect to see 700, 800 by 2027, there'll probably be a billion dollars in realty transfer tax revenue. So we're trying to capture $100 million of that uh, in the fall, if, if folks remember, we were successful raising that cap from 40 to 60, but our original goal was to get that cap to $100 million. So Senate Bill 532, introduced by State Senators Elder Vogel and Art Haywood, would raise the cap to $100 million over the course of three years, $100 million. Um, so right now, Senate Bill 532 awaits consideration by the Senate Urban Affairs and Housing Committee. The goal as it was last year is to get the committee to approve the legislation to vote it out of committee. And then that language from Senate Bill 532 could be amended into the state budget. Uh, and that's it. So by June 30th is when the legislature is supposed to pass the fiscal year 2023-24 budget, our ask is that the fair cap increase be included in the state budget. Now, there's a lot more about fair. There's a lot more about the RTT um, in an information uh, packet that folks will receive about a week prior to the event. Um, and after we conclude here, I'm happy to answer more questions about fair. Um, I think the folks on the call are probably pretty educated about what the program uh, funds, but pretty much anything that you can imagine related to affordable housing, whether that's uh, programs for weatherization or HVAC roof repair for senior citizens or housing locator programs, programs that work with landlords. Uh, there's programs for, um, for special vulnerable populations such as uh, victims of domestic violence, veterans. Um, th there's a whole host of things that FAIR funds. Um, it goes out to nonprofits and local governments in every Pennsylvania county. Um, these funds are very, very, very flexible. It's what part of what makes this program so popular, so useful, is that um, a lot of different entities are able to use FAIR. 
Um, okay, I think we could go to the next slide, uh, Jen. Okay, so messaging framework. I, I, I should call this slide just overall strategy messaging for for what we're we're trying to do here. So number one is we really want to work to build a relationship with our legislators or with the staff members that you meet with. So the common denominator for any legislator, local, state, federal, is that they want to know about the problems, the situations, the challenges that their district is facing. Okay, so you're there really to deliver them information that they need to know. That should be your mindset going into these meetings. You're taking something, you're offering them something. Okay, um, no matter where their district is, whether it's rural, urban, um, doesn't matter. Every corner of the Commonwealth has housing challenges. Um, every community in the Commonwealth is experiencing some level of blight. Um, tell them about what you're doing. Tell them a story about your fair grant. Tell them a story about what you would do if you could get a fair grant. Uh, tell them about your personal experience with a housing need, affordable housing. We have folks who are um, who are going to be with us who have lived expertise. Share with them your personal experience. Uh, for the most part, you're going to be in meetings with your legislators, um, or at least you're going to be within, within their region. Um, so you're going to be able to speak directly to the problems that they have. Ask them questions. Ask the member questions. Ask the staff questions. What's their perspective on housing issues in the district? What do they think about blight? Um, I can almost guarantee you they're going to have something to say. Um, and kind of, you know, much like a sales meeting, you want to know what your clients, your prospective clients' problems are. And these meetings are kind of, you know, they're very similar. You want them to share with you what are their priorities? You know, what do they see as, as local problems? And you want to invite them to be part of the solution. You know, they can be part of this. They can help build this very successful program and make it even bigger and, and deliver more resources to their district. Um, so, you know, the messaging around FAIR, which, what's been very successful for us is the economic value. Uh, FAIR, of course, is bringing in more resources to a district. It's creating jobs. It's transforming blight. It's helping vulnerable populations, um, you know, whether that's victims of domestic violence, maybe it's veterans, senior citizens. There's kind of something for everybody um, in the program. Um, so uh, I think I pretty much covered everything in this slide, but basically you're going to talk about what you know, what you know about best um, and share that with them. Um, how to have an effective legislative visit. So all of our groups, all of our teams are going to have a team leader. Uh, they are the ones who are going to open the meeting. They're going to share with the legislator, the staff, why we're here. You know, we're here to, to ask you to help us raise the cap on fair funding. Um, the role of the team leader is to make sure that everybody in the group gets to say their piece, right? You're kind of there to facilitate the conversation, um, to make sure that the ask is made uh, at the beginning of the meeting and at the end of the meeting. And that, you know, again, everybody in our group has the chance to, to tell their story, uh, share their thoughts. Um, you know, so we're, we're, we're just making sure that we're holding a conversation. We're not just talking at them, that we're talking with them. Um, Okay, so next slide. I think I have another slide, Jen. I think we're back to Jen on this, right? Yeah, we are. Thank you so much, Aaron, for that incredibly thorough overview of FAIR and how to have an effective visit. I do see some questions coming in the chat, and I want to let everybody know we will go through those and answer them at the end. Uh, so thank you, and keep the questions coming. 
So I do want to talk a little bit about what the Housing Alliance is doing before the day. Right now, our team is currently working to schedule appointments. We will be scheduling appointments up until May 19th. So if you know you joined this webinar today and you weren't sure if this is something you wanted to do, and now you're like, yes, I want to advocate for FAIR with, with this group of people, uh, please register by May 19th so we know to schedule a meeting with your legislator. Um, we are preparing packets for the meetings. So Aaron did reference those. There'll be information on FAIR, information on the specific counties, the schedule of the day, and other important materials that will help you have a successful meeting. We are working to organize teams. So as people register, we are breaking people up into teams based on geographic location and we are identifying team leaders. We will be following up with people via email to see if you're interested in being that team lead um, and we will notify you soon. And then we are going to have another meeting on Friday, June 2nd. Uh, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. So please save the date for that. This is where we will go over final logistics, the schedule of the day, and break out into your teams and have breakout room discussions about your meetings for that day. So I did reference the contents of the packet a little bit, but again, you know, we will have a meeting guide, talking points, information on FAIR, other fact sheets, and the schedule of the day. Uh, please bring stuff with you that's relevant to your organization and your programs and your community because we can leave those behind and you can also use them to inform your conversation that you're having. So on the day from 8 to 9, there will be a check-in in the rotunda. So there will be a table that has Housing Alliance staff. That's where you'll check in. That's where you'll get your packet. And then you will go find your team lead and break off into your teams for the day. The meetings are being scheduled from 9 to 1 p.m. And then we'll be having a box lunch from 1 to 2 p.m. You can grab and go. Or if you have other meetings scheduled for the afternoon, um, you can eat lunch and then attend those. So Aaron already did a really good job of talking about what you can do to prepare, but I will um, Re-emphasize, talk about like what FAIR programs have done in your community, discuss how lack of housing has impacted you, your neighbors, your family members, and other people you serve through your program. How is your community using FAIR and what would you do if FAIR were to be increased? Remember, you don't have to become a policy expert on FAIR, really just tell your story and the information that you know. And then this is a really useful tool that we will be sending out after the webinar. And the Housing Narrative Lab recommends this for talking to your legislators. And it just helps you build your story, your call to action, identify values, the focus, and what the outcome and the resolution is. We'll be sending this out afterwards. And it has been really useful for building your story to talk to your legislators. And then next steps, as Aaron talked about, prepare your story. You know, write down a few lines, organize your thoughts, use the tool that I just shared, and really let them know how housing has been foundational for you and share how having the fair cap increase would benefit your local community. Please, again, feel free to bring informational materials about your organization. And then please plan to attend the final team planning meeting on Friday, June 2nd at 2 p.m. Again, this is where we're really going to break out into our teams talk to the team leads and really go over the schedule of the day. And then please remember that you do have to register for Home Matters Day separately. So signing up for this webinar did not include you in the Home Matters Day registration. We will send out that registration link in the follow-up materials or you can find it on our website. If you would like us to schedule a meeting on your behalf, please make sure your registration is completed by May 19th. Also, if you're bringing folks from your organization with you or clients of your program, please make sure they're registered as well. And then finally, please let us know if you can no longer attend Home Matters Day. And with that, we will open it up for questions. Okay, let me look at the Q&A. Um, so Aaron, somebody wants to know if there is a companion bill 
in the PA House for SB 532. I think there's going to be a companion bill, um, and that could happen any day, but I don't necessarily know if it's going to mirror the Senate version. There's some different ideas that are floating around over there. Um, I, I strongly am encouraging House members to introduce an identical bill. I think that uh, would be most helpful. So by the time uh, you know June sixth rolls around, uh, we'll we'll make sure that everybody's updated um, with what is or isn't introduced. So um, that's that's the best information I have today. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, somebody would like to know how team leaders are identified and how groups will know who their team leader is. So that is really what that June second meeting is for. Um, and if you are identified as a team leader, you will be getting an email from either Aaron or myself asking if that is something you're interested in doing. And then teams will be introduced to their team leader on June 2nd. If you haven't received that calendar invite for the June 2nd meeting, uh, please let me know. You should receive it once you register for Home Matters Day. So once you complete that registration, you will receive that calendar invite. Okay, I think we have another question. If my agency has not received FAIR funds previously, what would you suggest we say in the meeting? So I'm, I'm guessing that you would like to receive FAIR funds. Or you have an idea for how you would use FAIR. Um, and, and that's where I would take it. Um, you know, how, how would you use the funding? How much would you ask for? What would you do with it? Um, you know, and again, that's part of asking them to be a, a collaborator with you. You know, it's like you're you're telling them about here's a problem. There's a problem in your district, and I want to use fair funding to help solve it. Will you will you join me? You know, in that in that effort. Thank you, Aaron. Um, any other questions? Um, you know, please put those in the chat. Oh, not the chat. I'm sorry, the Q and A. Um, otherwise, we will wrap up today's conversation. Uh, thank you for attending. And we'll give it a minute to see if anyone has any other questions. You know, while people are, you know, typing away, I'll just reemphasize a few things. Please register for Home Matters Day separately. We will be sending out all of these materials. We will be sending updates on bills, the advocate packets and the teams and team leads. Okay, we do have a question. If we haven't yet registered, what is the final deadline to register? Okay, so you can register pretty much up until the day of the event, but if you do want us to attempt to schedule a meeting with your elected official, you have to be registered by May 19th. Okay, any other questions? I see some people are saying they feel more prepared and excited. We're happy to hear that. Uh, we're also very excited for this. Um, and if you do have any other questions or you think of anything after we get off the webinar today, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, my contact information is here. Um, always happy to talk and prepare with you. Okay. That looks like that's all of our questions. Um, I look forward to seeing you at the June 2nd meeting, and that will be a meeting style, not a webinar. So we will be able to come off mute and take questions and talk as a group. Um, okay. Anything else to add, Aaron, before we end? Uh, I think we pretty much covered it. I think, uh, you know, just remember to have fun, you know, enjoy the time. The Capitals, uh, it's an exciting place during June. Um, I don't know if we've had one of these during the month of June before, but that's like, that's crunch time. That's like, you know, full on, full steam ahead to try and get a budget um, together. So I, I think, um, you know, it's going to be a busy building that day. Uh, just enjoy yourselves, um, you know, have fun. This is like your your time to, you know, to to shine here and, you know, talk to your legislators. So. Uh, look forward to seeing everybody. Yeah, um, we did have one more question come through. Um, is there anything else for housing in the governor's budget or bills we should be asking about? 
So um, there's not a lot for housing that's already in the budget. Um, you know, there's just really efforts to get things in the budget, namely fair, of course, but um, there's still the possibility of whole home repair funding. Um, you know, so it's not, it's not a bad idea to ask about that. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of feeling though, I think that with the program just getting underway and those grants just getting out to the grantees that it could be a little early for that. There's different feelings about it. Um, but you know, the governor did specifically mention in his budget address, whole home repair, but nothing was provided in, in his proposed budget for that new program. Okay, thank you so much, Aaron. Um, and if anybody else has any questions, please feel free to email me about it. And we're really excited to see you June 6th, and we'll be sending lots more information throughout the coming weeks. Um, thank you all so much. Okay, have a good day. Appreciate you all, bye.